everybody, this is Griffin McElroy for Polygon.com, and this is The Darker Side of the Moon. It's the last level that you can unlock in Super Mario Odyssey, and uh, you, you can get there after you collect 500 moons, and basically the only thing to do here is this really challenging sort of final level that is very long, and you can get one last multi-moon for completing it. So I'm going to show you how I did it. Um, this is not my first playthrough, this, this video that you're watching now. Um, so I know all the pro strats and almost die here, uh, just trying to get into the level because timing out frog jumps, it can be hard sometimes. Uh, so take your time here. That's really sort of the secret to this whole thing is take your time. This took me probably, uh, I don't know, a dozen tries in order to finally pull it off. And a lot of those failures were because I just thought I had it down and I would just try to rush it and lose. Speaking of, you probably just noticed a hiccup in the video. That was me cutting out an unsuccessful attempt. And guess why? It's because I was trying to rush it. I was trying to show off for YouTube, so don't do that. Uh, so that uh, flying saucer uh, boss that I just sort of skipped, uh, you can fight them if you want, and if you do, you get uh, one of the bonus life refills that'll take you up to six hit points. Uh, but there's a way to get one of those later on that is not, you know, it doesn't take as much time. and. Uh, I, I didn't end up doing it that way the first time I completed it because, you know, you can waste a bunch of time up front on a really bad run, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. So you want to, you know, vault off of the poles. They will sink into the ground, so you want to wall jump as quick as possible. Uh, for this pole jumping segment, you want to make sure that you are, uh, you know, delaying until the, the, the poles pop back up because they drop down really quickly and you don't want to screw yourself over like I almost did there. Uh, so this part can be kind of tricky, this, like, wave pole segment. You get uh, waves of sort of three ramps. They are small, medium, and large. And uh, if you don't want to land in the lava, the thing I would recommend is when you're on the large ramp there, you want to jump before you hit the top of it. Otherwise, you'll jump right over the small one and burn yourself and lose HP, which is never a good idea here. And don't get too greedy with the dismount here. Wait until you have a big ramp there that you can get up on. Right here to your left is a, a healing heart. There's a bunch of those that I'm going to try and show off, though I did skip some. Uh, a few of them are more well hidden than others, and uh, those can make your, your attempts much, much easier. I got bumped by a fireball and I lost it, but that's okay. This is a pretty low stakes part of the run here. So you want to take your fireball and time out your, your jumps here so that you're not hitting these, these chains of uh, spikes. Um, the easiest way to do it is do it uh, after sort of the spike rotates uh, just off of the hole that you're in currently. Um, like right now or right before it's about to hit you. It's much easier to time this part based on where the spikes are on the hole that you're already in rather than the one where you're going, if that makes sense. Uh, back there, there was a tomato that you could burst that creates a lava pool you can jump to, and uh, over that is another healing heart. But if you don't want to mess with that, you can just go around this tower. And hey, there's one right there. So you can pick that up. Uh, I honestly think the opening part of, of this level is much more difficult than the later part of this level. So if you find yourself sort of banging your head against just the intro and you think that you're not going to be able to pull it off, uh, keep keep at it because I, I really feel like the, the beginning part is the most difficult part. I had a lot of trouble with this part, actually. Uh, don't don't Again, don't get greedy here. Uh, you're going to watch me wait on this platform because on that next great platform up there, uh, some of those spiky things are going to spawn, and you don't want to be jumping around those while you're waiting for the steps to come out, which is unfortunately what happens here because my timing was off. Luckily, you can just kind of run around and avoid them. Uh, you can make this cycle where you raise up the ceiling and uh, jump to the platform the, the next it, w without having to jump back to the, the platform you're at with the spikes, but I did not pull that off. So here's a secret block. You can jump up on top of that raised platform and get another heart here. That one ended up being very helpful to me when I was uh, attempting this for my first time. You want to pop in here and extend your legs to drop the floor and move on to the next segment. This segment has two things that you kind of got to contend with. The first is this ice water that lowers from the ceiling. If you remember from the Snow Kingdom, you don't want to spend too much time in the ice water or you will take damage. Uh, but then you have this chain of enemies that uh, you kind of got to get around to. I screw this up, but it is possible to jump uh, over them uh, if you time it out correctly and get in this little divot here before this, the ice water catches you. Um, but even if you do, do take damage here, it's, it's not that big a deal because we have... Uh, one of those bonus hearts coming up uh, again pretty soon. So you want to grab Yoshi here. Uh, this part's pretty easy, although, again, I do kind of screw it up because I was trying to go fast. Um, shouldn't have gotten hit there, uh, so go right for that one and left for that one. And then for every other sort of chain of enemies on this conveyor belt segment, you can just stay on the left side. I dart around to get some of those coins for reasons I don't quite understand because I don't really need coins anymore. This one looks like it'll hit you, but you're good. Um, and then you ride this all the way to the top and jump to the next segment. 
this part can be pretty easy uh, if you don't feel like jumping over the uh, the blocks in the ground you can uh, activate the sort of sonar bomb things uh, I did not do that this run although I probably should have because I have some trouble with the uh, the staircase that comes a little bit later on so yeah just follow the flower path here it's pretty straightforward you can either bomb these and avoid the, the little sonar pulses or you can just jump right over them uh, if you do a you know a combo of special moves you can get over that that tallest one so this is the most sort of crucial part of the run uh, you'll do a trivia question with the sphinx there and after the first time you do it you don't have to do it again and you will always be able to get this bonus heart that will bring you up to 6 HP and this should be able to get you through the rest of the run um, because again, like I said, the rest of this is not as difficult as sort of the, the first few challenges. So keep following the flower path. For this part, you really want to pay attention to where the gold rings are, because they're going to show you where is going to be safe for you to go. You will not have your hat for this segment, so it's all platforming all the time. So you want to jump up there, run down there, and then start doing a wall jump there. Um, there's a lot of wall jumping in this segment. And you see those two rings above, that's going to show you where you're going next, because you're going to wall jump up there next. And I was actually pretty slow on this segment, but I still managed to pull it off because I knew where to go because of the rings. You might be tempted to run the end there. Don't do that. You'll get pushed off. Again, go where the rings are because that's where it's safe. And then at this point, the, the wall's just going to try and chase you to, to bump you off. But if you've been following the rings, you should have enough time to do it. This part's pretty easy, too. You just want to hold in that glide button and don't let go. Uh, don't pull up on the throttle because you'll stall out. Uh, these flies are really only going to be dangerous if they uh, pop up immediately in front of you because they will sort of homing uh, attack you, uh, but they are too slow to, to keep up. So as long as you are not flying directly into one, you will be fine. And as long as you're not diving or stalling out, you will have enough uh, momentum to, to keep going above this whole long pit. So hit this last one here. And you will be able to get up onto this next platform, which is one of the last ones in this segment. Uh, just use the forks to fling yourself. Take your time and, and line up your shots. I, I like to put the camera behind me before I attempt it. Uh, this part can be a little bit tricky, but it's not too hard to time that out. Uh, there's a pretty good lock on for the hat when you're throwing it at these forks. So even if you miss it, you'll, you'll probably get it anyway. Pop down in this pit and you're almost home. Uh, this next part is probably the most challenging part of like the end uh, segment of, of these challenges uh, a bunch of these spines are gonna come and jump at you They will sort of wiggle right before they attack so their their patterns are kind of predictable, but there's so many of them um, You have this sonar bomb which will start killing all of them But they will activate and chain react with the other sonar bombs. So uh, don't do that for as long as you can I actually accidentally uh, hit mine here and it makes me almost lose the run so do not hit that that sonar bomb for, for as long as you can if you're getting close to the end and you're overwhelmed and go for it you can see i hit that and then that's going to just set off a really bad chain of, of these that i do not do a very good job of avoiding uh they will take out the spines which is cool but they will also take you out and probably will so i do not recommend messing with it i almost fall off the platform there but i managed to save it i uh, lost my health bonus there and dropped down to three hearts but that's okay because i'm about to get it back again here in just one second uh so just here at the end avoid the spines for a little bit longer and jump up to the next platform um we know this guy we know this guy in his fun beak uh, there is a hidden heart here, which I didn't know about. I found accidentally because I screwed up the segment. Don't forget that uh, with these birds, you can uh, shake the, the remote instead of sort of springing upwards like this, and you'll leap upward really, really quickly, which is I sort of correct myself here and, and do it and uh, fasten myself onto this top swinging platform, which will take you to another heart, which I didn't need at this segment, but if you are low on health, uh, you can you can get some more health uh, like that just by hopping up to the, the top swing and, and riding it all the way to the end. So this is sort of the last dangerous part, I think, of, uh, of the darker side. It is sort of a, a circular Donkey Kong level, and the trick to this is to use the right stick to rotate the camera, because uh, if you've played these rotating segments in the past, you know that sometimes you'll be pushing right, and then right won't move you right anymore because you're in a big circle and now you're supposed to press up or whatever uh, in order to avoid that while you're running I really recommend using the right stick to keep yourself oriented at all times don't run all the way to the end of this segment you can get a really good shortcut here just by jumping up and keep you from having to avoid more of these barrels and get up under Donkey Kong um, there's still gonna be barrels coming for you so avoid those um, but just knock out the four blocks under Donkey Kong and you're good he's not but you are Go down that pipe, and we are almost uh, through the darker side challenges. Uh, this next part, might you might be getting kind of stressed out because you're close to the end. You don't want to botch it, but it's really, really easy. Uh, for one thing, when you spawn in as Bowser, hi Bowser, you have to start with six health no matter what. So you're, you got a full tank of gas no matter uh, where you were at before you started this part of the challenge. 
You're gonna have these cannons dropping these rocks on you. Uh, Bowser can just do a claw smash right through them. Bowser can also do claw smash to sort of air pause in the air for, for or air break, I guess. Uh, I got hit there, but again, it doesn't matter because this part's really short and you have six health. So even if you're getting hit by every rock, you should still be good. Uh, this is the only sort of really dangerous part of this is while you're running through this tunnel and smashing up the blocks, these rocks are gonna be chasing you. Don't get greedy. You can do like two blocks before you have to turn around and hit the rock, but I was going pretty slow here because I don't know why I was going pretty slow here, but uh, your, your claw attack has a huge range, so it's it's not that bad. Uh, here I am just jumping up the rest of the way. Uh, you can do a claw attack to sort of get a little bit of an extra uh, momentum and get up a little bit higher, but yeah, that's it. And then you're more or less done at this point as long as you don't do a super bad jump and fall to your death. Uh, you're gonna run over to this uh, thing. What is it? What is that thing? No one quite knows. But you're gonna turn into a little spark ball, ride that all the way up, and then go over to that thing and turn into another spark ball. And you're gonna ride across a very fun message. You don't have to go down all the letters like I did. Um, you can just zip across as fast as you want and they will light up as you go. And yeah, you're, you're done at this point. Congratulations, you did it. I'm hoping you've done it. If you want, once you uh, get across this segment, you can run over the scarecrow, toss your hat, and get that message sort of, like you didn't read it the first time, but anyway, uh, you don't have to get your hat back here. It's pretty close to the edge, so maybe don't risk it. Uh, and then you just jump down that pipe, and then the last thing you have to do is uh, climb that building, and these frogs make it really, really easy to do so. Although I actually screw up some jumps, so I need to stop saying that things are easy, because every time I do, I inevitably fail. So once you get up to the spire here, you can hop off the frog and jump up and then and then we climb. And this part's gonna take about 20 seconds. So I'm gonna wrap up, I think, here. Uh, that is how you complete the darker side. Again, just take your time, don't get too frustrated. Uh, try to find those hidden hearts if you're if you're taking damage. But once you get to the Sphinx and you get up to six HP, that, that should hopefully be able to carry you through to the to the rest of the uh, the rest of the level. Uh, it's not too hard once you sort of get the swing of it. Um, but yeah, stick with it, and I believe in you. I personally believe in you at home. I know your name, but I won't say it on the video, but uh, I just, I trust you, and you're you're more powerful than you think, and um, good, good, good job in advance. <laughs> Here we go, off the rails, but you know it's time to raise our sails. It's freedom like you never knew. 